Welcome to the pecan tutorial where we will look at tRNA genes and tmRNA genes. Just a little um, tutorial on tRNA genes, first of all, before we go into pecan and look at them. Uh, tRNA genes are clover leaf type structures. Uh, they have an anticodon loop, uh, a D loop, and a, a psi loop. And most importantly, they have an acceptor arm. The acceptor arm here has seven. Uh, base pairs and in the acceptor arm. At the three prime end of the acceptor arm, there is an extra base here. This can be any base, um, usually called the discriminator base. <laughs> and then there is a CCA. The A serves as the acceptor for the amino acid that binds to the A through the carboxyl group of the amino acid. Here's the carboxyl, here's the amino group, here's the alpha and the R group for the amino acid. And each amino acid that is attached to a tRNA is attached to a specific tRNA depending upon its codon and anticodon interactions. Okay, so there is a, a tRNA, amino acyl tRNA synthetase specific for each amino acid, and it recognizes a specific a tRNA depending upon its anticodon here. Okay, there's more in the CFAGES bioinformatics pages you can go read about. Let's go to just note this and then go take a look at uh, an example that we've looked at earlier. Um, the infernal covariance or the cove scores, we usually try to see if they're at least 35. Uh, minimal 20, okay, but usually 35 is what we try to look at, look for. So let's dive into pecan here and take a look. Where do we find these? If you look in the upper menu here, there's tRNAs and there's tmRNAs. Let's first of all go look at the tRNA. But before we do that, let's go over and look at the example here. Uh, earlier we had looked at an example where we have a tRNA and it overlaps a gene. Okay. And the question is, is it one or the other? It's one or the other. So we're going to go look at this tRNA right here to see if it's a, uh, an acceptable tRNA. If so, then we need to delete this gene. If it's not, then we'll leave this gene and delete the tRNA. Okay, so let's go take a look at this. And so we've clicked on the tRNA for this particular gene. And it gives the start and the stop. And there are two different programs that are used to uh, select the tRNA. One is Aragorn, shown in red here, and the other one is the tRNA scan SE, which then is shown in blue. Under each of these, the little parentheses then show where the show where the t um, hydrogen bonds are between the bases. For example, here there is a CGG. This is the anti anticodon. 
So this is a CGG. Here is the anticodon here. Um, And here is the CGG. The anticodon for this particular um, tRNA is actually coded GGT. So it's these three right here. The GGT uh, forms the anticodon. And these, the CGG is bound to um, CCG over here. So you have the CCG over here. And that, that's, that's what these parentheses are indicating. Okay. Uh, what we really want to look at here is the, the acceptor. And we see the acceptor. It should have seven hydrogen bonds. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It has seven in the acceptor arm, uh, but one of them's not hydrogen bonded. The other thing that we want to see is whether or not there is a CCA out here. So we have an, a base here, and then we have a CCA. So, hey, that looks pretty good. So that extra base is an A and then a CCA. Not all tRNAs will have the full CCA, which is okay because there are other enzymes in the cell that can add the CCA. Since this is a three prime end, single stranded, it's ideal for exonucleases to come along and munch off a base or two. And so there are, um, enzymes inside the cell that will add this CCA onto the three prime end. So if it's not coded for in the gene, um, the CCA can actually be added later. This particular one is coding for a CCA. Uh, the only disturbing thing here is uh, this acceptor arm doesn't have the full seven um, base pairs of hydrogen bonds. We come down, look at the tRNA scan, and it has the same sort of structure. Again, no hydrogen bond here. What we want to look for now in the tRNA scan is the Cove score, or the infernal Cove score, covariant score. And this happens to be 18.4 which is less than the 20 cutoff. And so <clears throat> the fact that this isn't a really good tRNA because of this acceptor arm problem and the very low Cove score coupled with the fact that <laughs> it's overlapping uh, a protein coding gene, which actually has a, a, a an immunity repressor <laughs> function uh, would be enough evidence to then say, let's take this and not include this as a gene. So to uninclude this as a gene, we simply just uncheck mark this. And we go up and we say, change tRNA data. It updates that. And now it is no longer included as a gene. If we go over to here and we update this, um, we see that it's no longer, there's no longer a plus mark here in the FAM map. Okay. Let's go take a look at... Um, the tmRNAs. tmRNAs are actually a, a dual <laughs> tRNA-like and messenger RNA-like um, RNA. So tRNA looks like this we just looked at. Messenger RNAs have a ribosomal binding site, a start, 
open reading frame and then a stop. The tmRNA has a little bit of both. It has some of the arms here and the loops and it has an acceptor arm with um, three prime end where an amino acid gets added. It also has down here <laughs> um, a start and a stop and an open reading frame that can be translated into a peptide. So this is a tmRNA. Uh, to find out a little bit more, you can again look in the CFAGES, bioinformatics help, and it will um, tell you what to do. If we jump back here to <coughs> PACON and look at the tmRNA, Again, we have the opportunity to include or exclude those usually. Um, and we don't see many tmRNAs, but when we do, it'll show up here. Aragorn actually predicts and, and it will show up. Okay, uh, that's all I have right now. Thank you very much for joining and we'll see you in another tutorial.